But as I said earlier, I want to end 2020 as the way I started it, celebrating. I want to start 2021 the way I end 2020, celebrating, honoring God, honoring who He is and what He is for us. I, I want to make sure that I don't ever get into this place where I see a lot of people around the holidays get depressed, get distraught. The year's coming to an end and they're frustrated over this and they're going into a new year and they're frustrated over that. If this year wasn't enough to frustrate a lot of people, I don't know what would be. But that don't mean you had to let it get to you. It could get to a lot of people, but that don't mean you had to let it get to you. Come on, somebody. So let me, let me share this this morning. I've said over the last few weeks that 2020 is coming to a close and 2021 is upon us. It'll be here next weekend. So my question has been quite a few times, what's going to be different from 2021 uh, that's not already happening in 2020? What magically is going to take place from December 31st to January 1st that's going to change in your life? Somebody said nothing. And he's probably right. Because if you hadn't changed it by now, odds are from midnight to the time you get up in the morning, nothing else is going to change. Right? So, so what's going to make 2020 different than 20, or 2021 different than 2020? Well, here I've got good news and bad news. Problem is they're both the same. What's going to make 2021 different than 2020? You are. That's the good news. What's going to make 2021 different than 2020? You are. That's the bad news. It's all the same news. You're responsible. For some of you, like, woohoo, I've got control. And I was like, oh man, I've got to do something now. <laughs> what do you mean it's my responsibility? What do you mean I have to do something? The only thing that's going to change next year is you. It, it really is. You know, the, the December 31st is coming, right? And January 1st is going to be the next day. Like, wow. Did you know tomorrow's going to be Monday? <laughs> right? See, the only change, the only, see, see our calendar that we have, that's, we have our calendar. I showed you, did I show you our calendar? And it's, it is, it's pretty accurate this time, too. Look at the snow. My God, I've shoveled, I've shoveled more snow since Wednesday than I have in years, seems like. The last time I complained about shoveling snow, somebody bought me a snowblower. I'm going to start complaining about not having enough fishing equipment pretty soon. Or needing airplane parts or something. What? <laughs> did you know? <laughs> so, so that, but did you know these are just, these are just dates on a paper for just markers in time for all of us that are trapped in time and space. Life is more linear. It's just it goes across a line. It's not. You know? Did you know your your life don't usually change from this to this to this to this to this very drastically. It, it doesn't, you can look at this calendar all day long and say, Woo, tomorrow's Monday. <laughs> Woo, and then what? And you can look at your, your calendar and say, December 31st, New Year, 2020 is over. I'm so glad 2020 is over. Why? What's going to change? You know, these, I know I'm, I'm being a little silly on this, but it's, it's the truth. But this is the way we think in our minds sometimes. We think something is going to change for us that's going to change us. We think something is going to change around us that's going to make things better for us. And I've got some sobering news, you might say. The only change agent... I've got too much stuff up here. Lord have mercy. The only change agent from one point in time to another is you. It's me. It's you. The only change agent from one point of time to another is us. It's up to us to make the change. So the good news is it's in our control. The bad news is it's still in our control. All right, so this, it's both the same. However you take news, that's your news for the day, okay? See, things don't really change. Things don't really change. People do. And then people change the things. Now, I know we can't control what other people do. We can't control their changing. But we're the ones that change. And then when we change, we turn around and change things around us. But the things don't normally change on their own. They're made by people that change. That's why it's important for us to talk about this marriage stuff coming up in a couple of weeks. Because a lot of couples don't understand that they change over the years. 
they become different people. They weren't the same teenagers going out in high school they used to be. Now they've got kids and responsibilities, and now they're changing. Their needs are changing. Their desires are changing. Their wants are changing. And the other one's looking at them like, what happened to you? He's like, well, I changed. Well, I'll change back. <laughs> and they're like, no, somebody's got to be the grown-up around here. <laughs> so it's a changing, and, and we have to understand that as couples. If you're going to have a, an extended life with people around you, you've got to understand you've got to give people room to change and grow and be who they, God's called them to be. Because the only thing that's going to change is the person, not the things. Things don't change. People do. And then people change things. You know, many times we're waiting on things to change. We're waiting on circumstances to change. We're waiting on jobs to change. We're waiting on churches to change. We're waiting on life in general to change. We're waiting on people to change. We're waiting for everybody else to change, and we can do whatever we're, I don't know what we're waiting for them to change to do to help us, but we're just waiting. We're, we're always waiting for change and blaming other people when it don't happen. Hmm. If we're not proactive in our lives, we'll always feel like we're waiting on something to change to make life better for us. Have you ever been there? You're waiting on something to change that's going to make your life better. Am I the only one that's ever done that? Am I the only one that's ever been bored with life and wondering why everything don't change so I'll be happier? Right? Yeah. No. Yes, you have. Don't even. Yes. Yes. So, but just in case you haven't noticed that there's not many people out there just rushing around trying to make your life better. <laughs> now, I'm not, that's not bad news. I'm not telling you that is bad news. That's just the truth. That there's not a lot of people just running around trying to cater to you and try to make your life better. Now, that doesn't mean that there's not people that really want your best interest at heart. That doesn't mean that there's people that don't do anything they can to make your life better. But the odds are they're not proactively seeking a way to make your life better and you know why because they're trying to make their own life better <laughs> they're and usually waiting on you to change because they think that'll help them <laughs> you're the problem always have been i knew it from the beginning <laughs> if you would change everything would be better <laughs> so we're waiting we're we're waiting we're waiting we were waiting and what I'm, what, and part of what I'm saying is, you, is, is this term we use, we use down in the South sometimes is you can't just cop a squat and have a Coke and a smile and expect everything to go, work out for you and everybody else try to make your life better without you having some input. That's what you have a cop a squat and have a Coke and a smile and just sit around waiting everybody to make your best life appear. It's not usually the way life works, is it? So why don't we wake up to the realization that we have to be proactive in our decisions? 2021 is not going to change unless we do. I always wonder that sometimes about church folks. You know, I, I, we love praise and worship in here, and I know everybody's not as demonstrative as I am. I know everybody doesn't get as excited as the praise and worship team. I know everybody doesn't do the same way. But I know some people that just, they have this idea that when they get to heaven, praise and worship is all of a sudden just going to flow out of them. There's like this switch that's whenever they get into heaven that God's going to flip their praise switch, and then they're going to worship God. They're, they're waiting, waiting, waiting. Whenever I get to heaven, everything will be okay. When I get to heaven, I'll do this. When I, it's like we're waiting to get to heaven to do stuff we're supposed to be doing right now. When I get to heaven, I'll pray. You don't need to pray when you get to heaven. All your prayers will be answered. And everybody else's will be answered. What are you going to pray? <laughs> You'll know all things. <coughs> I'll do this when I get to, I'll, I'll witness to people and evangelize and get people born again when I get to heaven. <laughs> if they're not born again, they won't be there. I'll put on my armor and fight the devil when I get to heaven. He won't be there either. <laughs> my Bible says the Lord has prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And some people say, boy, I can't wait to get to heaven to get to that table. You'll be at the wrong table. When you get to heaven, that'll be the marriage supper of the Lamb. The table he's prepared before you in the presence of your enemies is right now. He's prepared a table before you right now to partake of that table and all the benefits on that table to stand up and defeat the enemies in your life right now. There's no waiting to get to heaven to stand before uh, your enemy and defeat them. They won't be there. 
And I know somebody, I can't wait. I'm gonna get to, I'll be so happy when I get to heaven. Where's your joy now? The Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. Some people look like they've been eating lemons all day some days. And I won't get to heaven. I'll get, be happy when I get to heaven. I'm like, I don't think God can do anything with that face. <laughs> There's a miracle working. Jesus had to do something there. So what, I'm, what I'm saying is that you got to be proactive in making your life what you want it to be. you got to take some responsibility. And I know most of you do. In this church, we do. In this church, we talk the truth, we live the truth, we are the truth. Come on, somebody. We're walking, living truth of the Word of God. And we're going to do everything we can to, to be diligently responsible for our own selves. Not saying we're not going to help other folks and not saying other people aren't going to help us. But just remember, if you're waiting on somebody else to make your life better, you're wasting your time. The only person that's aggressively, actively, diligently seeking for your happiness is Jesus Christ himself. I, I hate to say it, but you can look around at the people sitting next to you right now and say, why aren't you trying to make me happier? What are you, what are you doing? Why aren't you trying to make me happier? <laughs> See, the, the only thing that's really going to change in 2021 is you and me. It is. I'm sorry. That's, that's, that's some wisdom for you for today. But you know, one of the things, here's some things that's going to stay the same in 2021. Here's some things that will not change in 2021. I promise you. I can, I can almost for certain tell you these things will not change in 2021. They'll still be 60 seconds in a minute. They'll still be 60 minutes in an hour. They'll still be 24 hours in a day. They'll still be seven days in a week. They'll be 365 days in a year, unless it's a leap year. There'll be four weeks in a month, unless there's five. <laughs> and there'll be 52 weeks in the year. It'll never change. That's, that's, that, unless the Lord comes and gets you, or you go to meet Him, the one thing you can count on in 2021 is time. Time. I know you're like, well, how is that encouraging? I'll get to that. Time is also one of the things, this is where we have to look around and look at everybody else and say, you know what? Time is one of the things we all receive in the same amount. You know, a lot of folks say, well, I just know there's just not enough time in the day. Well, too bad. You're not getting any more. <laughs> there's just not enough time in the day. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. There's 24 hours in every day. And other people succeed in those 24 other people are successes in those 24. Why do you need 25? <laughs> Why do you need eight days in your week? You don't. You just need to use the time you have, right? And Ecclesiastes 9.11. Ecclesiastes 9.11. I want you guys to go into 2021 uh, with the understanding that you are the change agent in your life. Celebrate what has happened in 2020. There's been some successes in this, in this year. There really have. You know, there's been some depressions, but there's been su some successes also. And 2021 can be a great year if we make it that way. But we're the ones that have to change. Ecclesiastes 9.11 says, I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle of the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill. But time, everybody say time, and chance happens to them all. See, the race is not to the swift, the battle is not to the strong, the bread is not to the wise, riches are not to the men of understanding, and favor to the men of skill. Time and chance happens to them all. So basically, time and opportunity belongs to all of us. Time and opportunity belongs to every one of us. I'm going to get up in the morning and have the same day you do. I'm going to get up in the morning and have the same 24 hours staring at me that you're going to have staring at you. What are you going to do with yours? December 31st at midnight is going to roll over into January 1st, 2021, and you'll have the same 24 hours a day still staring you right in the face. What are you going to do with it? How are you going to approach it? What are you going to do with that time? Do you know what a lot of people do with their time? Waste it. Time is a commodity. It's just, it's just like money. Time is, and actually, it's time is what's spent to get the money. Anybody got any money this morning? I can promise you it took time to get it. And you're willing to exchange your time for that money. How much is, how much is your time worth? It's a good question, huh? How much is your time worth? How much are you willing to take for it? 
Anybody in here old enough to look back now and say, boy, where'd the time go? <laughs> it's the most expensive thing you'll ever spend. Time. Time is the most expensive thing you will ever spend. And we sometimes just wish it would pass so it would all be over with when we have such an opportunity before us to enjoy our time. Come on, somebody. See, time and opportunity have to be taken seriously. We can never look at the success of someone else and think that they're stopping us from achieving what God's planned for us. You know, because the reason he says that is because here you got the, the wisest man that ever lived. He's looking out across at people and thinking, well, they're succeeding, they're succeeding, they're succeeding. But these people are looking at them, people thinking it's because they got this, that they're success, and they'll never have it because they don't have that. You can't ever look at somebody else and determine whether you're going to succeed or not. You can never look at other people and determine your success. Not when you got God on your side. Not when you got the favor and the anointing of God backing you up. You've got God fighting for you. You can never look at someone else and say, well, that just happened because they're lucky. They're this. They're that. How about look at yourself and say, well, I can." their success proves it can be done. Their success should be a, a goal. This, this is kind of a... I was putting this message together and I thought, man, this sounds a whole lot like a vision message coming together. Because I talk a lot about vision and direction. Because why? If you aim at nothing, you'll hit it how many times? If you aim at nothing, you'll hit it every time. Don't, don't think you're a super, super smart marksman just because you can hit nothing. It don't take some fancy shot to shoot and hit nothing. It takes somebody with a vision, with a goal, with a direction in life to say, I'm aiming at that and bam, I'm going to hit it. That's my target and I'm going after it. I will achieve that. There's so many people that that get upset when I start talking. I know so many. I've had people in here upset because I talk about doing these things and vision and, and obtaining things. Well, well, you're just going after things. I'm like, no, I'm going after vision. The things just happen to get caught up in my way. The things are just a part of The things get to bless me. The things get to bless other people. My time is spent to, to, to obtain what I can to use for the kingdom of God. Come on, somebody. So it's the favor and the grace of God that we can do and be all the Lord wants us to be. We can't look at other people and say, well, they've done that because they're this. They've done that because they're that. Maybe they took their time and opportunity seriously. Maybe they took their time and opportunity seriously. And you can do the same thing next year. You can take your time and opportunity seriously. And say, you know, I have a goal. I have a plan. I have, a, I have an agenda. And by the power and the grace of God, I'm going to achieve it. Come on, somebody. So but let's back up one verse and look at this, Ecclesiastes 9.10. Let's back up this one verse and see what Ecclesiastes 9.10 says. See, now this is kind of a, like, wow, time and opportunity happens all of us. I got time and I got opportunity, right? But let's see what he says in verse 10. He says, whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave where thou goest. Wow, how encouraging is that? You're going to the grave. You're going. You, the Bible says so. We're going to go to the grave, but guess what he says? He says there's no work, there's no device, and there's no wisdom in the grave. What he's saying is you, you've got nothing to offer after you've left this place. Come on, somebody. You've got nothing left to offer after you're gone. There's so many people waiting for something. Well, I'm a, well when I get here, uh, when I get there, one, one day time's going to run out, and all that you had to offer is going to be in the grave, and you're like, well, what did you leave? You had time and you had opportunity. What did you do with it? What changed from 2020 to 2021 if you're not the one that's going to make the change? How is 2021 going to be different? Or do you want it to be? Or sometimes I, I look at vision and I want to plan ahead and I want to go towards things. Why? Just to stay focused. But if my life, if it just kind of stayed the same, I'd be a pretty happy guy. I kind of get to do what I want to do all the time. My wife lets me. She does. She lets me do whatever I want to do almost all, almost some of the time. No, I'm <laughs> just, she does. I, got, I, I don't know why people can't be happy. I'm, a, I'm one of the happiest men on the planet. I get to do whatever I want to do when I get permission. <laughs> just kidding. I still... But, but the reason that I do that is because I was going to bring my vision board in here. I'm going to take a picture of my vision board and bring it in probably next year, and we'll start talking about vision again. Why? Because I get a vision, and part of my vision is part of her vision, and we do things, and we plan, and we purpose, and we, and we go towards things, and, and we make successes, and we make things happen, and, and it makes us happy. And I'm not waiting on you to make me happy. You're not my happy maker. 
This is part of my point. 2021 will not change if you don't change and quit waiting for other people to change to make you feel better. You have to be proactive in your own change. You have to be proactive in your own success. You have to be proactive in your own changing to become who God's called you to be and quit waiting on the church, the pastor, the, the husband, the wife, the kids, the this, the that. Why? Because you have time and opportunity. Don't waste your time. Somebody say, don't waste your time. So my word of en- see that's there's some wisdom this morning. So my word of encouragement this morning is as long as you have breath in your body, you have time and opportunity to enjoy this life. Let me say that again. As long as you have breath in this body, you've got time and opportunity to enjoy this life. As I said, you can't go back and change yesterday. You've only got so many hours left in today, but you've got tomorrow, the next day. But well, people say you can't change the beginning, but you can change the end. You can't go back and change the beginning, but by golly, from this point forward, you can change the end. If you don't like where you're going, I know we do it in the natural. If you get out there on that highway and you're going the wrong way, what do you do? Turn around. (laughs) (laughs) Unless you're mad. Unless you're a man. No, even even men will turn around if they're going the wrong way the problem is they just don't know they're going the wrong way a lot of times <laughs> they haven't stopped and asked for directions i thank god for these smartphones i don't have to ask anybody for directions anymore <laughs> hey google no hey oh hey duck duck go <laughs> there's another platform out there so if you're going the wrong way i mean the smart thing to do would be turn around no we'll do it in the natural and things like that no sometimes not even in things like that right so why wouldn't we do it spiritually? Why wouldn't we do it in, in other areas of our life? If, we're, if we don't like the direction life is going, why does people find it so hard to turn around? I know, I know some answers for it. One of them is pride, arrogance. Some of, some of the times we won't turn around because we know that it will help another person. We're doing it out of, out of just, just plain frustration and aggravation. We know that if we turn around, it might do somebody else some good, so we're not going to do it for that reason. We're not going to turn around because if we turn around, that'll make it look like we didn't know what we were doing. I got news for you. You already don't look like you know what you're doing sometimes. Face facts. <laughs> Everybody else can see you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> I mean, my, <laughs> that's the way I think about it sometimes. I try not to get too proud and arrogant in my actions and my, and my abilities because I'm thinking somebody's watching me and they're thinking I probably don't know what I'm doing. I'm like, oh, you're probably right. Most time I don't. <laughs> I'm just waiting for God to talk and me get up here and tell you what he said. Other than that, I don't know what I'm doing. But I'm open to that fact that if I'm going the wrong way, I will turn around. I will, as long as I've got breath in this body, I've got time and opportunity to enjoy life and go the right direction. If I'm going the wrong way, turn around. Come on, somebody. So you have time and opportunity to make this upcoming year a great year. You really do. You know why? This is how I know. Because there's one more thing that will never change in 2021 or any other year. Hebrews 13:8 says this. What does it say? Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. <laughs> Come on, somebody. I can rejoice in knowing that, that my God never changes in my upcoming year. I've still got God on my side. Come on, somebody. That will never change. That will, John 10.10. 10. What does John 10.10 10 tell us? Hallelujah. The thief cometh not to, but for to kill, to, to steal, to kill, and destroy. Now, see, he'll never change that part. The enemy's pretty consistent too. But then Jesus said, I'm come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Amen. Come on, somebody. Jesus will not change. He came to give us life and life more abundantly. And I believe that will remain the same in the upcoming year. I believe the God that come to give us a life and life more abundantly is still going to be pursuing that same goal through the next year. Our job is to get in there and receive it. Our job is to spend time with him. Our job is to, to follow the vision, the plan that God has for our lives aggressively not passively so too many christians are passive about their walk with god well if god wanted me to have it he'd give it to me well he wanted you to ride down the road he'd put wheels on your butt too <laughs> didn't do that and you still get the car and head down the road on the, on that car if he wanted us to fly he'd give us wings you know it's crazy talk if god wanted me to have it i didn't he'd give it to him well if he'd want you to have clothes this morning he'd put them on you thank god you used a little wisdom there Thank, thank God you don't let this rule apply to everything. 
She didn't run out of the house naked this morning. Go, oh, I want me clothes. He'll put them on me. You got to be a little. You gotta, you gotta, I, I think as, as, as most Christians, we got to be a little dogged, determined to go after the things of God. We got to aggressively go after what God has promised us because the Bible tells us in 1 Peter 5 8 that we have to be sober, we have to be vigilant. Because we have an adversary, the devil, who roams around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. You have an enemy that will stop you from receiving the blessings if he can. You have an enemy that every turn he will be coming against you to stop you from receiving God's best in your life. And you've got to be aware of that fact and say, No, ho, ho! I will take the blessings of God for my life. I will aggressively go after the things God has given me. Come on, somebody! <clears throat> All right, well, let me, let me try to bring this to a close here. See, it's because of these truths that I want to leave 2020 and enter 2021 rejoicing. It's because I know my God never changes. I know that he's working best things out for my life. He said he come to give me life and life more abundantly. And I'm not going to base my, uh, my success on what the other, everybody else does. I have to make changes for me. You have to make changes for you. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So I want to leave this place celebrating the time I'm in, but I want to be celebrating the time I'm coming to. Hmm. I want my journey just to be as exciting as the destination. I really do. I want my journey to be just as exciting as the destination. You need your journey to be just as exciting as the place you're trying to get to. Hmm. Because if not, you're going to waste a whole lot of time waiting on somebody else or waiting on something the title of this message this morning it's about time and I, I, I've shared this with you guys before my grandmother used to say something whenever we were little bitty boys getting up in the morning on these cold winter days in Florida and uh, <laughs> and, and them cold them long cold winter nights and days in Florida and uh, the winter time we didn't want to get up because it's so cold it wasn't her house anyway she didn't have she had a little gas heater uh, didn't have doors on the in the rooms. We just had sh blankets hanging in the doorways because we didn't have doors in the house. Wood floors. You know that that make a cold day in Florida in the winter. And she's trying to get us up out of bed to go to school, and we're like, no, we're laying right here. We're not. It's cold out there. But all these blankets would be up on the doors, and she would get up early before us. Other boys would get up, and she'd be in there, and she'd have the heater lit, and she'd have that little gas, little bitty gas heater going. So that as soon as we got out of bed, first place we'd run to was the heater. <laughs> and get warmed up in front of the heater, right? And uh, we didn't want to get up so many mornings because it was cold. But she would say, she always said this one thing, and I've told you guys this before. She would say, you got to get up, guys. That clock don't wait on nobody. That clock don't wait on nobody. And she knew if she didn't get up, we're going to miss the school bus. And then we would be in trouble, <laughs> right? Yeah. She said, she'd always say it. She said, she said, that clock don't wait on nobody. And I'll never forget that. I guess that's why I am kind of time conscious. I don't let time consume me, but I'm time conscious. And the reason I am is because the clock don't wait on nobody. Time doesn't wait for you. Quit waiting for time. Because it's not going to wait for you. And 2021 will give you time and opportunity. But not just to sit and wait on it to actually do something to be proactive in your life pursuing the things God has called you to do. there's so many people in churches even today sitting in the church wishing they could do something for God with a plan to go do something for God and doing nothing while they're waiting to go do something for God I know that's a pretty strong statement for a lot of folks but think about what I'm saying what are you going to do while you're waiting on God to tell you something to do what do you do when you're just waiting? What's the what is in what's in the in the waiting process? What's in that time? You know, a lot of people are going to go do things in the future that they could be doing now. How you get started at it, that's between you and God. But I can tell you, time don't wait on you. So quit waiting on time. So what are you going to do for 2021? What what are you waiting for to start whatever it is that you know you should be starting? Good question, huh? What are you going to do? What are you going to start? What, when are you going to start? 
It's kind of like, I'm sure, I'm sure 2021 will be another time that I say I'm going to lose weight in 2021. You know, I've probably lost about 5,000 pounds in my life, so don't laugh. I've lost weight. <laughs> don't think I ain't. I've lost thousands of pounds in my 53 years. It's tons of weight. Y'all know, y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Can I have the praise team come back up, please? I want to go out of this place rejoicing today. I want to go out of this place rejoicing, singing, giving God glory, knowing that my way maker has already got a way planned for me in 2021 and that I'm the one that has to be aggressive in taking the change that I want to be in my life next year. Whatever God's got planned, whatever God's going to do, I have to purposely seek it out. You know how many people are, are waiting for someone else to tell them what to do in life? Come on, somebody. You've got a purpose. You've got a plan. Find out what it is. Pursue God. Don't waste your time. Come on, somebody. Well, stand to your feet this morning. We're going.